You are watching an interview that could literally change our way of understanding life. It comes from the YouTube channel Asensia Foundation, and you can find the link to the original interview in the description. What I have done for you is comment on it step by step and examine together the revolutionary implications of what is being said. Because believe me, what we are about to discuss is material that shakes the foundations of physics and biology as we know them. Her vision proposes a completely new physics, a physics capable, finally, of explaining living systems and consciousness. The protagonist of this conversation is Dr. Anita Goel, a brilliant mind who is simultaneously a physicist, doctor, and scientist in the field of nanotechnology, a person who works exactly at the intersection between quantum physics and biomedicine. Before diving into this ocean of knowledge, I ask you for a small gesture that is fundamental for this project. Subscribe to the channel. The interview starts from a premise as simple as it is powerful, expressed by Dr. Goel. The physics we have developed in the last century, that of Einstein and quantum mechanics, was built by studying inanimate, closed, equilibrium systems. Think of a rock, a planet, a gas in a container. But living systems, like us, are the exact opposite. They are open systems, very far from equilibrium, that constantly exchange matter, energy, and information with the environment. Let's stop to reflect on this concept. This is a crucial point. Living systems do something apparently magical. They reverse the universal tendency toward disorder, the famous entropy. Dr. Goal gives a very clear example. A table over the course of 100 years due to entropy will disintegrate. A living system instead actively fights this disorder, decreases its internal entropy, maintains itself organized, repairs damage, grows. In my opinion, just this alone makes us understand that to describe life, we need an expansion of our way of seeing physics. We cannot use the same rules we use for a rock. And here Dr. Goal raises the bar. She argues that our modern medicine is practiced mainly at the level of chemistry and molecular biology, but has not yet truly integrated deeper physics. And the most fascinating thing is that, according to her, it's not just about applying physics to biology, but the opposite is also true. The study of life could help us expand the frontiers of physics itself. After all, figures like Einstein, Schrodinger, and Penrose always had the feeling that quantum mechanics was incomplete, that a fundamental piece was missing. Dr. Goal suggests that missing piece could be precisely life and consciousness. Any theory that aspires to be a theory of everything cannot ignore these phenomena. To tackle this challenge, Dr. Goal proposes expanding the most famous formula in history. Einstein gave us E equals MC squared, uniting matter and energy. She suggests that to understand living systems, we must add a third fundamental element, information. Information, according to this vision, is not something abstract, but has a physical and tangible reality interconnected with matter and energy. A personal consideration. This idea that information is a fundamental physical entity could really be the key to unifying worlds that today seem separate to us, that of matter and that of mind. Not by chance, she goes so far as to say that physics must tackle head-on also the question of consciousness. But how do you study all this in the laboratory? Dr. Goal found her experimental testing ground more than 20 years ago, when she literally fell in love with what she calls the nanomachines that read and write our DNA. These molecular machines, enzymes, are the perfect place to observe the interchange between matter, energy, and information. She explains to us that DNA is like a piano. The music that we are 
depends not only on the sheet music, the DNA sequence, but also on the fingers that play that piano, that is, on the information that comes from the environment. The environment, the milieu, constantly communicates with these nanomachines and influences the way DNA is read. This, guys, has enormous implications. It means that evolution might not be purely Darwinian, based on random mutations, but also Lamarckian, that is, influenced by the information that the organism receives from the environment during its life. Here, Dr. Gohl poses a shocking question to us. What if these nanomachines, to do their work so extraordinarily, used quantum mechanics? And here she lists a series of clues that give you chills. First, efficiency. These molecular nanomotors convert chemical energy into mechanical work with an efficiency of 99.99%. To give you an idea, your car's engine barely reaches 40%. Second, computational power. Goal has estimated that one of these nanomachines performs about 100 billion computational steps in just 10 milliseconds to read a single DNA base. What the hell is it thinking about so much? Third, the search. To copy DNA, the machine must find the right molecule in a sea of candidates. How does it manage to be so fast and precise? Perhaps, she hypothesizes, it uses a quantum search algorithm which allows it to see all options simultaneously. But wait, everyone. 99.99% efficiency? 100 billion calculations in 10 milliseconds? These numbers are beyond any human scale. No engine we have ever built comes close to this efficiency. No computer does so many calculations in relation to such a small task. Dr. Gohl wonders, how is this possible? And her hypothesis, her fascinating speculation, is that the answer is quantum mechanics. Perhaps these little molecular machines don't proceed by trial and error like a classical computer, but explore all possibilities simultaneously in a sort of quantum superposition and then find the right solution instantly. For me, this is the most amazing idea of the entire interview. Obviously, the main criticism of these ideas is always the same. Biological systems are hot, wet, and noisy, wet, warm, and swampy, an environment where quantum states, which are extremely fragile, should be destroyed immediately. This phenomenon is called decoherence. But Dr. Goal responds with calculations. According to her estimates, the time in which the system manages to maintain its quantumness, the coherence time, is longer than the time the nanomachine takes to perform its function, such as reading a DNA base. This makes the quantum hypothesis at least plausible. And to prove it once and for all, she is designing the equivalent of a double-slit experiment for a biological system. The goal is to create a situation where this nanomachine faces a choice and see if it behaves like a classical ball, which takes only one path, or like a quantum wave, which goes through both simultaneously, creating the famous interference pattern. If she succeeded, it would be definitive proof that life, in its most fundamental core, exploits the laws of quantum mechanics. In conclusion, Dr. Gohl's work opens us to a radically new perspective. The idea that we are not just complex biochemical machines, but that life itself could be a quantum phenomenon that exploits the deepest and most bizarre nature of reality to achieve unimaginable efficiency and complexity. This research is not limited to uniting physics and biology, but touches on the fundamental questions we have always asked ourselves. What are we? Where do we come from? Her work suggests that the answer might be written in the strange and wonderful language of quanta. And this could lead to technologies that today we cannot even imagine. I would really like to know what you think. 
Do you believe it's possible that life and consciousness are quantum phenomena? Are we on the verge of a new scientific revolution? Let me know in the comments. Let's discuss it together. If you like this video and want to support a project of scientific divulgation free from dogmas and prejudices, I invite you again to subscribe to the channel. You will have access to exclusive content, such as periodic summary videos, and you will give a vital contribution to this project. Thank you for following me on this fascinating journey.